Head down to Todd Woodbridge. Well, ladies and gentlemen, what a match that was. Would you please put your hands together once more for both of our finalists? Well, what a fortnight of tennis we've had here at Melbourne Park. We've seen some inspirational tennis. There's been heartbreak, a historic quest falling ever so short, and comebacks to the top of the game. Now, joining me here for the presentation is Tennis Australia's chair, Jane Herdlicker, the deputy general manager and board member of one of our major sponsors, Le Jou Le Jou, Mr. Wang Hong Bo, and to present the winner's trophy, it's a pleasure to welcome back to Rod Laver Arena, former world number one and winner of the 2000 Australian Open women's singles title, Lindsay Davenport. Also with us are tournament director Craig Tiley and tournament referee Wayne McEwen. and a great job to them throughout a difficult couple of weeks. I'd like now to invite Tennis Australia Chair Jane Herdlicker up to say a few words. As Todd said, what a fabulous two weeks of tennis we've had and inspirational performance from all the women competitors and capped off tonight by a brilliant match which was never sure to be finished until the very last point. So congratulations to both competitors. Garbinia, it's been 13 years since an unseated player made it into the finals of the Australian Open. You performed beautifully throughout the two weeks. You demonstrated to the world what great grit and deep tenacity look like, and it just didn't go your way tonight, but we'll see you back here again. We're very confident of that. And Sophia, what a tournament. At 20 years old, you've shown the world You had a dream when you were seven years old. You were proud and confident in announcing your dream to family, friends, and anybody who would listen. And I don't think anybody around you would have believed that at 20, you'd be standing here as a Grand Slam champion. The inspiration you've showed to young girls around the world about having a dream and working hard for it, backing yourself, having strong self-belief from the start to the finish, and demonstrating deep tenacity and going for that dream is truly, truly inspiring. Thank you for a great night. I'd like to thank our sponsors. Each year we work hard together to ensure that we bring the very best in sporting events in the world to the world and we work together tirelessly to make sure we continue to raise the bar and thank you for your continued support. And perhaps most importantly, I'd like to thank our 10,000 strong people who form the team that support this great event and the fans who bring it to life. It's the combination of our team and all of you that bring the spirit of Australia to the rest of the world. And there's no doubt that Australia's been struggling. We've had challenge with bushfires, but the fact is Australia is open for business. We're open for great travel holidays and adventure, and we need your support. So for those of you at home, it's about a lot more than tennis in Australia, and please come join us. Thank you.
Thank you, Jane. Don't go away because I'd like um, to invite Eva Azdaraki Moore to come up to the stage, our chair umpire tonight. Jane has a special gift for her. Congratulations, Eva. Well, a former number one came into this tournament unseeded for the first time in many years. She powered through the draw, beating two top 10 players on her way to the final, showing the tennis world that this two-time Grand Slam champion is back. Would you please welcome our runner-up, Gabinya Muguruza. Okay, I think I'm gonna keep it short because I'm gonna get very emotional. <sighs> Congratulations, Sophia, I think you played an incredible match, incredible tournament. You deserve the trophy. I think we're going to see you play more finals for sure. <laughs> um, I have to start thanking my team because it's an individual sport, but I will never be here without them. And they're over there suffering with me today. <laughs> I want to say thank you to my longtime manager, Oliver, my fitness trainer, Santiago, Katrin, my physio, for being strong over there. You know, my, my team, the doctor, and Conchita, thank you for helping me reaching another Grand Slam final together. I have to say, it has been incredible playing out here in this environment. Um, this court brings an energy, and I think the crowd is what makes it special the game because we play for you guys. I mean, that's the show. So thank you for coming. And the tournament for making every year incredible job and making us feel great to be here. Almost our favorite Grand Slam, I have to say. <laughs> no. And thank you for everybody that supported and worked hard these two weeks for make us, you know, feel homey. Thank you. Congratulations on a wonderful tournament, Gaminia. Well, what a revelation this young woman is. Sophia has shown that she's an incredible competitor. Her spirit, determination has carried her through an incredible fortnight beating the world number one along the way, and to get to tonight's final, where again she refused to yield. And now she can hold aloft her first Grand Slam trophy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the champion of the Australian Open for 2020, Sophia Cannon. Okay, um, this is my first speech, but I'm gonna try my best. Um, <laughs> first off, I just wanna congratulate Garbine on 
on a great match and a great tournament. Um, I'm sure we're going to have many more finals to come down the future. And I just want to congratulate you and your team on a great two weeks. So congratulations. Um, I just want to say, you know, my dream has officially came true. I cannot even describe this feeling. It's so emotional and I've worked so hard and I'm just so grateful to be standing here. You know, dreams come true. So if you have a dream, go for it and it'll, it's going to come true. Thank you. <laughs> Um, I just want to thank Craig. Thank you so much. You know, I love this tournament. I want to thank all the sponsors, Kia, Tennis Australia, and everyone for making this tournament possible. It's just such an honor and a privilege to be here. And just thank you so much. And I'm looking forward to coming back here next year. I would like to thank the crowd, you guys. These past two weeks has been the best two weeks of my life. So thank you so much. You know, I love you guys from the bottom of my heart. And last but not least, I would like to thank my team, my dad, everyone that's there. So thank you for making this possible. My agent Ugo, thank you for putting up with me. You know, I can't believe we're here today. We worked so hard, all of us, and I'm just grateful from the bottom of my heart, so thank you. I would also like to thank my mom. She's back home, probably watching this speech, so I love you, mom. Um, everyone back home, just thank you for all of your support, and you know, we really worked hard, so thank you, and I'm just so grateful for this. So thank you so much. I think we'll all agree it was a pretty special first Grand Slam speech. Congratulations, Sophia. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the formal part of the presentation. There will be a, um, Sophia will take the trophy down here for some photos and then do a lap of honor for all of you to take a photo as well. Thank you very much for joining us here tonight. Don't forget there is a mixed double still to be played out here on Rod Laver Arena. And we look forward to the men's final tomorrow night. Thank you. Great job from Todd Woodbridge, our master of ceremonies after the final. It was a pretty good maiden speech. She better get used to it because we think she'll be making a few more. Sophia becomes the 18th American to win in 41 attempts at the Australian Open in the Open era. So it's a great record from the US of A. And another little honour for her, Lou. We mentioned that she'll probably go to number seven. She's projected to go there. She'll become the youngest American to debut in the top 10 in around 21 years since Serena Williams did it back in 1999. Well, there's some incredible numbers there, but this young lady, she was a, a child prodigy as a tennis player. We knew she was coming through a long time ago and perhaps uh, all of the public here in Australia and around the world are just getting to know a, a new young WTA superstar because there's a lot of great qualities. I, I really like her attitude, this young lady. She's unafraid to really show her character on the court and sometimes we've just missed that a little bit, just to, to see that energy and that love of the sport and of course the journey that she's come on because it's been a, a lot of hard work. And we spoke about that game. We'll talk about that yeah. game over and over again at two games apiece in the third set Magarutha comes out and gets her at love 40 and she produced the most incredible epic magnificent game one of the greatest games I think the Australian Open has seen in a final that yeah. was extraordinary. I, I definitely agree and I think that just took the w absolute wind out of the sails for Gabinho, she really was on the prefaces there of really getting on top of that third set and then not to take that break just really must have been extremely disappointed and she really didn't recover from that moment on. You just felt Sophia just really then took charge of the match. Well, she dropped her next serve 
in the next game and then she dropped her following serve and double faulted on match points. So it was a, a flat way to finish what was a brilliant match, two hours and three minutes. All of the numbers so impressive. Here's an impressive number that I'll give you. Before tonight, Sophia Kennan had earned around 2.96 million US dollars. And by winning tonight, she earns another 2.75 million. So she nearly doubles her career earnings with this win. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? At all the off-court amounts of money that will bring in, it, it, that's another threefold, really. It's amazing uh, what becoming a Grand Slam champion does to young athletes and quite a, an amazing uh, transition into coming from the 15th player in the world to be on the big stage and then to win on your first opportunity it's just going to give her so much confidence just five foot seven but she plays so tough she's a brick wall out there we're starting to see just uh, some of the real strengths tonight i felt she was very aggressive and i feel she beat muguruza at her own game i felt she was able to dictate much better than her opponent and of course, things just don't turn around so quickly also for players because Muguruza, she lost first round at Wimbledon, she lost first round at the US Open. She would have been incredibly happy and perhaps feeling a little pressure that she was in the final tonight with a very big opportunity. So that's now four Grand Slam finals for Garbinia for two championships. She was the runner-up at Wimbledon in 2015, losing to Serena Williams, runner-up here. That sort of thing, I guess, doesn't leave you very quickly. That'll sit in her stomach for a long time. Well, and I think Serena Williams knows a thing or two about that as well. The last four Grand Slams that she's been in, she's unable to break that 23 number and hit the number for Margaret Court. She wants to chase that number, and I guess over time things get tougher. So for a young 21-year-old to arrive here, you haven't got a lot to think about. She's just got that dream in the back of her mind. She keeps talking about that she really felt she was comfortable here tonight and she could do this. They must have known something because they've coordinated the ball kids' outfits with <laughs> Sophia's outfit. Yeah, very much uh, collectively in colour there. But uh, gave a really nice speech, of course. Big moment there. She kept looking over to her box and Hugo, her manager, just to kind of get eye contact to say am I, I giving the right to <laughs> speech am I saying thank yous to the right people and well it's tough isn't it and just to clarify she is 21 years and 80 days old and Naomi Osaka 12 months ago was just marginally older than Sophia Naomi was 21 years and 102 days old when she won so a couple of 21 year olds in recent years winning the title and adding their names to all of the famous names on that wonderful trophy. Well, and I think this is great for the WTA Tour as well, isn't it? Getting some marquee players with some youth coming behind. Of course, we've got some ageing players there that are, Serena Williams will not want to go away and Venus, but they are getting older and we need some really fresh, new, wonderful blood. And this young lady is going to bring a lot of enthusiasm to a lot of tennis lovers around the world. and. The way she plays, she just leaves everything on the court. And I think you've got to really take your hat off to her today. Absolutely gutted and disappointed is Gabinia Muguruza. But when she'll look back at this, she didn't quite step up as this young lady did. It'll be a nice conversation that she'll be having with Craig Tiley and welcoming her into that real incredible arena of champions on the the Daphne Trophy there, so. Yeah, the Daphne Akhurst Memorial Trophy. And as you said, when she comes back next year, she'll walk down that hallway she's about to walk through now, and her name will be there. And it will be on the honor roll forever. Yeah, and she'll probably get a little bit of a different reception as well, Pete. I think so. <laughs> and she'll deserve it too. There's the signature of the champion. What a brilliant performance it was. The Rod Laver Arena crowd farewells Sophia Cannon. The trophy accompanies her 